Hello, welcome to the Team Predictor here on the Arsenal way ahead of the visit to Stamford Bridge to take on Chelsea. I'm Guy Clark alongside me, Umar Chowdhury, as ever, as we look to try and predict the 11 we want to see Mikel Arteta field for the upcoming fixture. As I say, Umar, visit to Stamford Bridge hasn't been a happy hunting ground for Arsenal really over the uh, over the years, certainly obviously since their takeover. But that said, right now, nowhere's a happy hunting ground. I oh, know every game that comes, every game that we're playing, whether it's away, whether it's at home, we seem to be on a rot that we can't like get better, get out of it. So right now, it could be Southampton, it could be Brighton, it could be going away to Burnley or Norwich, and I think we'd struggle at the moment. So mm. going away to Stamford Bridge is is going to be a difficult, difficult ask. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I did the, the post-match stream on, on Saturday with, with Bailey looking back on the win. The, the thing that really horrified me with the, the result of Southampton was I think we could still be there now and, and probably wouldn't have scored. I know there were some big saves from Fra Fraser Forster in the game, but watching them back, I think a lot of them looked a lot better than what they were. 100%. I think the Saka opportunity uh, was probably the best save out of them all. I think the Smith Road chance, I think he sliced it and it was just Fraser Foster, just the heroics that he's done. He's over exaggerating the save. But I agree. I think we weren't doing much in terms of we were just kept keeping the ball, keeping the ball. But when it was coming to the final third, there was nothing. Oh, the guard was off, off below par. Saka again had the below par performance and it was just frustrating and like, like I agree with you I think if we were to play that game for the next three four hours I don't think we would have scored and it says a lot about where we are right now. Yeah, it does say a lot about where the Arsenal are right now let's get into our team then for the visit to Stamford Bridge going to put your team on screen first um, change your shape talk us through it. I think we need, we're bleeding at the moment, guy. We're bleeding and we need to stop the blood. So we have to revert to the formation that won us their fake up in Mikarteta's first season or so. Because right now, I think it, we're, just, we're just ticking off the games and we're not really doing nothing. So we need to revert to a different formation. We need to revert to a different style. And we need to revert to a style that will suit some of our players. Nuno Tavares. I think three at the back could do wonders for him because it'll give him that license to attack. It'll give him that license to overlap because he knows he has the defensive players behind him to support him. And I think going away to Stamford Bridge, we need a similar performance that we done a few years ago. I think, um, was it last season or so when Emil Smith rode yeah, behind closed um, doors? Yeah. And we defended brilliantly. I thought man to man, we were excellent. We stopped Chelsea playing. Yeah, it was behind closed doors, but it's still Chelsea. So I think we just have to feel that, follow that similar pattern, that similar route, because right now we've been trying this four at the back, whether it's 4 3 3, 4 2 3 1, and it's not working. We're not creating chances going forward. We're not really doing nothing with the ball. So we need to revert to a style that Mick Arteta does know, and we need to revert to a style that we're stopping conceding goals because with Arsenal at the moment, when we concede, more than likely, the, the likelihood is we're not coming back into the game. We're not going to turn the game around and we're not going to get a win. So when I go into a game, you know that Arsenal have to start strong. They have to get the first goal. So with Chelsea, the first objective will be to defend well. Because Chelsea will be coming there, even though they're in an FA Cup final and even though they're probably thinking, yeah, top four is safe. They will want to ruin Arsenal's Champions League aspirations. They're not going to go there and think, yeah, we're, we're on our holidays. We'll be thinking to Liverpool in a couple of weeks. They'll be thinking, no, let's, let's, let's beat Arsenal. Let's ruin the aspirations and let's, let's just show that we're the top dogs in London. So I think a style three at the back, Rob Holding as well, yeah, low block, Rob Holding, what they call him these days. I think bring him back into the team and I think we go from there because something has to change. And from me, it's the formation right now because we have seven, eight games left of the season and it's just going away. It's just slowly we're fading. So at least change it up and give us something to at least cheer about. So that's that's my thinking of it anyways. 
Yeah, so you've gone with a back three of, of White holding and Gabriel Cedric and Tavares, the wing backs, Lakonga and Chaka in midfield, Saka and Smith Rowe supporting Martinelli. So, so no Martin Erdegaard. I think he needs a bit of a break. I think the last few games he's been underperforming. Um, he's had a very good season, I think, this season, but last three games he's failing. And I think it also comes with responsibility as well of the team when the team's not performing well the forward attacking players, you can see the differences. You can see the, the the limitations come out, I think, for me. And I think in the last few games, Odegaard, he's been fading. He's looking tired. And I think at Stamford Bridge, Chelsea are going to be at it. They're going to have most of the ball. So we have to sit back and we have to counter them. So my thinking is a lot of players with energy, a lot of players who can finish the ball, can put the ball in the back of the net. I know Odegaard, he's improved his goal-scoring attributes this season, but for my liking, too often at a time, when there's a chance to shoot, he doesn't pull the trigger. So I think with Saka, Smithrow and Martinelli, you have finishes there. And Saka, I think, as well, he's, he's, he's not had the best of times in recent weeks, but still, he's one of our better players and you don't drop one of your better players. So for me, Martin, Lee Smith Rowe and Saka, I think they can cause Chelsea problems because Saka and Smith Rowe, they won't stay in their uh, position. They'll interchange as well and they'll cause Chelsea a lot of problems. So for me, that was my thinking. And with Lokonga, I know there's probably been shouts for El need to come in with his energy. But I think Lokonga, he played okay against Southampton. Uh, yeah, I actually I mean, didn't think he was yeah, that bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, saw, I saw a lot of criticism on social media, comparisons made to Matthew Ganduzi. I think we need to stop doing this as well. Every time um, Lokonga has a bad performance, our fan base quickly say, oh, we had Matthew Ganduzi. Oh, we, why did we sell him to Marseille? Oh, why did we get a player like Lokonga? Matthew Ganduzi is miles better. The fact is, Lokonga this season, he's been drafted into the team when we've had injuries. Yeah. Every single time we've had injuries or suspensions, he's been chucked into the deep end. And he's a young player. You look at Pep Guardiola in recent uh, years, what he's done with Phil Foden. He's embedded them into the team because they have experienced players. We don't have that at the moment. Yeah, he's not really had that chance as he could grow into the team probably naturally in the way in which Arteta would have wanted him to. It's kind of been, been forced. I actually thought, and you, you, you touch on Glenn Doozy there, in terms of mentality, I think there's there's probably a big difference. And I think you saw it actually on Saturday that and I know the these kind of decisions are probably made by the, the guys in the, the press office, the media team as to which players go out and speak mm. to the press. But the fact he was the man put up to go and speak after the defeat at Southampton, I actually thought that was quite telling, given he's not really been in the team at all. And yet he was the man, right, you go out and, and, and justify the performance. It's exactly, and people need to remember that this was a guy who was captaining Andalet, one of the top teams in Belgium. This was a guy who Vincent Company was lavishing praise on, making comparisons to Yaya Toure. So just because he's had a few games, bad games, it doesn't mean he's a bad player. Smith Rowe hasn't been firing. Saka hasn't been firing. Does it mean that they're bad players? No, we're just going through a bad patch at the moment. So for me, I think I, I liked his performance against Southampton. And with momentum and with the run of games, I think he'll get better. And next season, you see the Sambi Lokonga where we signed him from Anderlecht. So I think he, he's going to be fine for me. Yeah, no, we'll have to, to, to wait and see. I, I still think the jury's out, but equally, yeah, I, I don't see much much benefit in kind of uh, really criticising him. Here's my team. I've also gone three at the back. Yeah, we've both gone with Martinelli up front. Maybe we can, we can have a bit of a chat about that. But I've gone for Ramsdale in goal, of course. Back three, White Holding and Gabriel. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to just talk about that and the guys in front of them, El Nenny and Jacka. Uh, I have gone for El Nenny. Of course, his only league start this season came at Old Trafford, and for me, I think we we just got to pack out the middle of the pitch um, and just try and stifle it as much as we can. Erdegaard and Smith Rowe have kind of got in the the ten roles, as it were, and I would actually have them very narrow indeed, and literally have the the width one on one battles. Uh, Saka down our left hand side, likely to probably be up against Reese James. I would have thought if he's playing at right wing back, and, and Cedric against Marcus Alonso, two players who very much are better going forward than they are defensively. So that could potentially be interesting. But I think that middle, middle part of the pitch, Uma, for me, it's it's you pack it out. And I'd go with Jacker and El Nenny, and as much as neither of them are going to really offer you anything going forward, it's kind of 
isolating that three-man strike force that Chelsea seem to have hit on now, which I don't really know why it's taken them a year to do it, given it fired them to the Champions League last season of Mount Havertz and Werner. But they do look dangerous as a trio. And as I say, I think you've just got to... It, 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 it won't be pretty and it, and it might have to be attritional at times, but I think that's, that's the way Arsenal get anything from this game. Yeah, park the bus for me. Park the bus at Stamford Bridge. And Mikarte has proven that he can do it when he needs a defensive performance against one of the better teams, whether it's in the FA Cup we saw against Manchester City, whether it was against Chelsea in the FA Cup final, whether it's going to Old Trafford when we won 1-0. He has the capabilities of setting his team up into a good shape defensively so each man knows their job. And for me, that's what we have to do against Chelsea. Because we're not going to go there and play them off the park. We're not going to go there and play beautiful attacking football. I wish we could, but the reality is right now we're nowhere near that. So for me, we have to go there, just focus on our job. Each man has to focus on their jobs and we have to have a defensive shape. And we just have to basically stifle Chelsea. And if we can hit them on the break and if we have the opportunity to counter, we'll do that. And a 1-0 win would be... I buy a hand for it, offer it for it, because yeah. right now we just have to stop the bleeding. And if we can get a win, like an ugly win, anything, I think then it will give us a bit of momentum for the next game. Because right now it's game by game. Because yeah, we just have to stop the rot. Yeah, I considered Smith Rowe playing through the middle, um, but I've I've gone with Martinelli. I just think he offers more penetration potentially on the break, albeit actually attacking from a deeper, wider position might actually break that Chelsea offside trap to more effect. So I wouldn't be against those alternating. And you dropped Odegaard. I very nearly did as well. Nearly actually threw in Nicola Pepe, which I think probably speaks more of the desperation to which at this point I'm I'm kind of looking to. But just looking at the, the cup final team that we put out against Chelsea in 2020, when, of course, we did win the FA Cup. I mean, you look at the the team from that day, I think the, the team I've selected here has two players still in that team, and they're Rob Holding and Granite Xhaka. Um, obviously, Emi Martinez played that day. David Luiz, Kieran Tini injured. Ceballos, Bayerin, Maitland-Niles, Pepe, Lacazette and Aubameyang. And Pepe did play well, counter kind of balancing what... Um, what Arsenal were trying to do down that left-hand side that day with a Bamian kind of cutting in and Pepe was able to do the same. And as I say, he looked dangerous, but away from home at Stamford Bridge in the end, caution has, has kind of overruled me there. And uh, yeah, to be honest, I, I, I'm struggling to see when Nicola Pepe fits mm. again for Arsenal. I know I've said it about Nuno Tavares, but this is a, a, a lot longer issue that's been going on with Nicola Pepe. And to be honest, I, I, I struggled to see a way back in for him at Arsenal. Yeah, I don't. I think this summer they need to make a decision because his contract is nearly coming up to an end. And I think this summer is key. I think they will sell him or they'll get rid of him on loan because I don't think he's going to figure Emi Carter's plans. It's a shame because he had all the potential in the world when he brought when we brought him in from Lille. And the price tag has been touted so many times. But there is a player in there, but I just don't think he fits this style that Emi Carter wants. And I think he's short of confidence as well. He doesn't look like he's happy when he plays for Arsenal. But do you think it was a bit of a, in, in a way, a bit of a foolish piece of business to do regarding kind of, we know for so many years Arsene Wenger would forego certain players in certain positions of signing them because he didn't want to block pathways and everything. Now, Bakayo Saka had played for the first team prior to, to Nicola Pepe arriving, I'm pretty sure and I'm right in saying that, the year before in the Europa League campaign. Now, he and Smith Rowe were, were both being spoken about and touted around as young wingers, wide players coming forward. And then we go and sort of splash club record money on a winger. To me at the time, it's, it, it felt a bit of an unneeded acquisition. And now I, I, I'm kind of with you. I think for me this summer, he's got to be sold because we've mm. got to stop letting these, these kind of players run down contracts, cancel contracts and be left with, with egg on our face. Now we're not going to recoup anywhere near the amount of money we, we paid out for him. But even at this stage, 20, 25 million pounds, you're getting some money back and you're moving on rather than a loan, which only really sees to, to watch his value drive down over another year. 100%. They just need a... It's, it's a move that hasn't 
materialized. It's a move that hasn't worked out in both parties' best interests. So they just need to say to themselves, the Arsenal board, just if we can, like, say, recoup 25 to 20 million, that's fine because they're not going to get any more than that, to be honest. Um, and I don't want him to go out on loan because I know Arsenal have a habit or when it comes to players that they want to sell, they always let them allow them to go on loan. We have to sell him this summer. Yeah. We have to put that money, inject it into areas which are needed. But I agree. I think the decision to make a move for him when he was a little, in hindsight, it looks like a bad decision. I know Raul Sinelli was involved in the deal. So you don't, you, 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 you don't know what was going on with that. I know Una Emery has said before that he wasn't really interested in signing Pepe. He was more focused on signing Wilfred Zaha, his Ivory Coast teammate. So again, you need to look at all these things into consideration. But I wish him the best of luck. I think it hasn't worked out for him at Arsenal, but it doesn't mean that he's a bad player. It doesn't mean that he's a bad person. It just happens sometimes. Yeah. So fair play to him. If he can get a move this summer, and be happy playing football again. I think that's the most important thing for Nicolas Pepe. Yeah, definitely. Echo, echo those thoughts. Right before we go, then let's 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 get to the the grim part. I think uh, our predictions for this game. It's not often I'll predict the Arsenal to lose, but I'm going to have to say that that this one I do see coming uh, two 0 defeat. I think Chelsea probably will have too much for Arsenal. But they, of course, did play a day later and in an FA Cup semi-final. They've just come back from Madrid as well. Hopefully there is some tiredness that Arsenal can look to exploit. But yeah, I just think the, the amount of rest and recovery they are going to be able to get in between now and, and the game um, will mean that that's probably wishful thinking. And as I say, probably envisage them, them just being too strong for us. So I'll say 2-0 defeat to Chelsea. And with that, Arsenal's top four hopes, I think, will will finally be done. You, yourself, Uma? If they revert to a three at the back, I think they can grab a draw, but I don't think he will go three at the back. I think he'll persist with the four at the back. I think Mikel Arteta is just that kind of manager. Um, so I think Arsenal will lose. I think it'll be 3-1. And I think, yeah, the top four hopes will, will be the final nail in the coffin. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see then how it does play out. Plenty of content to come, though, across here on the Arsenal way as well as over on Football London. We will continue to bring you all the build-up, including both Mikel Arteta and Thomas Tuchel's pre-match press conferences, and then after the game as well, the match reaction stream, and again, the press conferences with all the fallout. But from myself, Guy Clark and Umar Chowdhury, thanks for joining us here. And remember, keep following us down the Arsenal way. Come on, come on, come on, come on.